In this video, we're going to look at a new class of problems called NP-complete problems. NP-complete problems are not quite the same as NP problems, and we'll see how they differ in this video. In the previous video, we defined the class NP and talked about uh, the distinction between P and NP. In this video, we're going to be talking about a subset of the NP problems. These are called the NP complete problems. So this is a subset of NP problems. Every problem that is NP complete is also an NP problem. And how do we define this set? Well, if a polynomial time algorithm on a deterministic machine is ever found on a deterministic machine for any problem in the NP-complete subset, then it follows that P equals NP, which would be an extraordinary result. Most people who think about this probably believe that P does not equal NP. So let me just say this again. If a polynomial time algorithm is ever found for a deterministic machine for any problem in this category that we call NP-complete, for any NP-complete problem, then it solves the question of whether P equals NP in a way that nobody expects it to be solved. So it indicates that if a problem is NP-complete, it's probably the case that you're not going to find a polynomial time algorithm. And what that means, if P equals NP, it means that polynomial time algorithms exist for all problems in NP. Now, there are lots of problems in NP, and lots of, of those problems uh, could use polynomial time deciders. And research has been done looking for algorithms that can solve those problems efficiently. These are problems that apparently require exponential time. And so they are very, very difficult, if not absolutely impossible, in a practical sense, to solve. So it would be nice to have a polynomial time algorithm for any of these problems. And this is, but the search has been on, and the problems that are in NP are problems for which there no polynomial time algorithm has ever been found. So now let's look at the NP complete problems. If you've got some NP-complete problem and you suddenly find a polynomial time algorithm to solve that problem, you haven't just solved that one problem in polynomial time. You've basically proven that a polynomial time algorithm exists for all the problems in NP. So to say that a problem is NP-complete, in some sense, says that it really is truly NP, and uh, you know you're not going to find a, you're not very likely to find a, a polynomial time algorithm for it. If you do, you'll you'll win the million dollar prize that's being offered. Okay, and many interesting problems are NP complete. Not every problem in NP is also NP complete, but many many interesting problems like the Hamiltonian path problem and the click problem are NP-complete. It means that they seem to require exponential time to solve on a deterministic machine. And if for any of those problems you ever found a polynomial time algorithm on a deterministic machine, it would solve the NP problem. It would prove that P equals NP. And therefore, that not only had you found a polynomial time solution for the problem you're interested in, but you've proven that a polynomial time algorithm exists for all the problems in NP. Before we talk about the relationship between the NP complete problems and the entire class of NP, we need to talk about and explain the so-called satisfiability problem. Sometimes it's just referred to as SAT. So what is the satisfiability problem? Well, we talked previously about logic, 
And so let's restrict ourselves to propositional logic. And let me quickly define what uh, a formula looks like. In particular, we're interested in Boolean formulas, so you don't see any quantifiers here or relation symbols. We just have what we call Boolean variables, and we have Boolean operations, such as and, or, and not. Um, sometimes we'll use this symbol for not. Sometimes we'll put a bar over it, but it's equivalent. We have constants, true and false as well. And out of variables and logical operators, Boolean operators, we can build formulas. Here's a formula. Uh, we'll call it phi. And it just says, uh, remember, this is conjunction. Looks like an A, so it's and. This is disjunction. It's an or. So not X and Y or not Y and Z. Is this true or not? Well, it depends on the um, assignments of true and false to the variables x, y, and z. And so the problem is, is there a solution to this formula? Is there a way to assign uh, true-false true, false values to this expression so that uh, the entire thing is made true? And the answer is, of course, yes. We could make Either one of these has to be true, or this. either this one has to be true, or this one has to be true. Let's take this one. If we sign y to true, and uh, both of these have to be true, because this is an and, so we'll make y true, and we'll make x false, which makes not x true. So that's an assignment. x gets not y, uh, x gets false, y gets true, and z gets anything, let's say true. Uh, we'll make this whole formula true. So this is satisfiable. A Boolean formula is satisfiable if there is an assignment to the variables to make the formula true. Uh, here's one. Uh, x is false, y is true, and z is, well, I guess false would work just as well. Okay, so here's the problem stated formally. It's the language of Boolean formulas such that uh, phi is a Boolean form formula, and it is satisfiable. Whether it's a Boolean formula or not is just a parsing problem, and that can be done, as we know, in at least order n cube time. And um, But the question of satisfiability is uh, a little bit trickier and apparently requires exponential time. So uh, that is the satisfiability problem. First, let's note that sat is in NP. What we can do is we can non-deterministically guess a solution. For example, the solution we saw on the previous slide, x is false, y is true, and z is false. And then we can check that that solution satisfies the Boolean formula, and we can do that check in polynomial time. So uh, that proves that sat is a member of NP. Now, we come to the next theorem that sat is in P if and only if P equals NP. In the next video, we'll prove this, but for now, we're just going to state this theorem. Okay? In other words, if we can solve the satisfiability problem in polynomial time on a Turing machine, then it implies that P equals NP. And furthermore, if we can prove that these two things are equal, then we can solve the satisfiability problem in polynomial time. Well, certainly the, the latter direction is pretty obvious since it's a, a problem in, since SAT is in NP, if we prove that that's P, then by extension it's in P, then SAT will be in P. But more importantly, if we can figure out a way to solve the SAT problem in polynomial time on a deterministic Turing machine, it means that P equals NP. So remember our definition of NP complete. Any problem that's in NP complete means that if we find a polynomial time solution for it, it proves that P equals NP. So by that definition, SAT is an NP complete problem. In fact, SAT was the first NP-complete problem, and 
and it was it was this work that, uh, that introduced the idea of NP completeness, and we'll see where that goes. Um, so if we can find a polynomial time solution for SAT, then we have proven that P equals NP, and that's the theorem. Finding a polynomial time algorithm to solve a Boolean formula on a deterministic Turing machine would prove that all programs in NP have polynomial time algorithms. And, of course, this would prove that P equals NP and that lots of problems that can't be solved in less than exponential time actually do have polynomial time solutions. And this would uh, rock the world and make you instantly famous.